Now, in object-oriented programming, a lot of times what you're importing is not really a module, right, it's, or a table. It's actually a class that you would export and instantiate it. But there are cases where you would do the revealing module pattern where you want private classes or some ways in which your module you don't want to expose publicly. So you only return or put things on the module that you actually want exposed. And so sometimes that's kind of plumbing to make your class system work. If you're a functional developer, most of the time, 99% of the time, you're exporting functions, but you too can also have private modules or functions that you don't want exposed. And so the problem with doing that is that when you consume it, you still have to do this object dot or table dot way of doing things. Now, if examples would be map filter reduce, right? If you just want those, in this case, cow and hay, I could go something like this. And that would significantly reduce the code, make it a little bit more smaller, but then I have to do two lines of code per import, which is super, super lame. So there's one syntax sugar thing you can kind of do. At the very bottom, whether you're doing OOP or functional, imperative, procedural, doesn't matter. You just return multiple variables of what you're exposing. It could be a class. In our case, we're going to do functions. So module cow, module hay, and then it will return those from the actual import. And so you just change this to import and then change this to cow and hay because it returns multiple values. And there you go. That way you have a nice kind of like to structuring way. It's just really utilizing Lua's built-in ability to do multiple return values. So I import only the things I want from that function. And again, you don't have to do this. It's not very Lua specific. It just makes it nice to significantly reduce how much code you're going to actually use if your module exports multiple things that you want access to.